Brian, you've been on the record for a few weeks now saying need pitching, going to try and add pitching. Deadline passes, you didn't add any pitching. What happened in that regard? It wasn't for lack of effort. Um, we, you know, engaged all teams. Uh, some, you know, some players obviously we, we didn't match up for. Uh, other circumstances, those players weren't really available, even though they're, you know, widely talked about in the in the public setting. Um, some of them obviously, you know, uh, had some whether it was contract status issues or medical issues. So it was just a lot of different, you know, uh, individual uh, circumstances that basically put us in a position to, to, to not be able to complete anything. You know, as my job obviously is constantly trying to improve this club and, and you know, we're, we're doing it for a long time. And, um, you know, and just in terms of this circumstance, we didn't get close to anything, um, but we certainly, knocked on all doors, had a lot of ideas and exchange of ideas with clubs and in our effort to improve. Um, but the fallback has always been we know we have a good club already. Um, and, uh, and you know, the job is to obviously look under every rock to see if you can turn up something to add to what we already have. And uh, just, you know, didn't get, that, didn't get that done. You know, um, I feel comfortable with walking away from everything that was in front of me because, you um, those weren't real opportunities as far as my conversations were going. Um, you know, so the fallback is to, to look in that room and the players we have and, and feel really good about those guys and uh, hope that the, the ones we have that are coming off the DL at some point come back and join the party and keep this thing rolling. Um, but, uh, but in the meantime, obviously, with the trade deadline, you know, certainly wanted to do more if we could have done more to improve this club we've been doing it across the the course of the season whether we were running into a maven or an encarnacion along the way uh, amongst others uh, but obviously through this 31st weren't able to add to that uh, from what we've already done eric cash given what one of the main your main competitors or what is assumed to be one of your main competitors in the postseason did in houston do you feel like they created a significant gap between where the two clubs are well, let's let's find out. You know, we got to play the season out. We got to take care of our own business to put ourselves in a position um, to be one of those fortunate teams to play in October, and then take our roster up against whoever and see where it takes us. Wally, Cash, would you characterize yourself as disappointed with how this worked out? I mean, I'm, I would say disappointed that I can't add to what I already have, which I feel good about and strong about. And, you know, the intent and interest is obviously, can I add to it? Can I add to it? And and me and my staff worked extremely hard. I have no, no regrets in terms of the effort and uh, uh, trying to match up with others. But, again, the various reasons, it didn't work out. So certainly disappointed you'd like to have more if you could um but i didn't have any realistic chance to in my mind based on the dialogue to do so um you know it's certainly not something that you know when the beginning of the month we line up and say oh you know I look forward to you know being on this day and you know i've done this enough where you present you know the the various new options that come your way and here we are and we're gonna you're know, gonna it, augment our roster with these new players and see how it works um but you know this was a unique deadline it felt different um you know what the reasons for that it's hard to explain other than the fact that um uh, i'd say almost everything was out of reach based on my dialogues but uh but we stayed at it and tried to see if the prices were going to change and and then i've you know i think i've been fairly public you know i met with a number of you up in fenway park when uh my last were in front of you saying essentially that you know we're going to be uh, disciplined and walk through this process and um, you know I can't share obviously the, the dialogues that and the options that were in front of me but uh, but I feel strongly that the decisions that were made you know you know were the for the benefit of the franchise and um, 
you know, despite obviously wanting to add to the roster. So um, trust me, you know, we're in alignment from top to bottom, sharing everything with ownership all the way through about what the realistic shop options were, sharing, you know, the price tags associated with how it puts pressure point, whether it's on the payroll, whether it's the medical risk, if you went this way, the payroll risk, if you went that way, or the prospect value, if you matched up this way. And, and there was nothing that lined up to the point where we were a go on. So, um, again, you fall back and look at the roster you have and feel like, well, this is a damn good roster and it can compete, we feel, with anybody in the game. Um, you always want to reinforce for, for the stretch job, drive because of injuries that could happen. And um, you like the more the merrier. Uh, but, you know, we're, because of how it shaked out, uh, we're going to basically look to hopefully add from our disabled list, which we have some pretty star-studded guys sitting there waiting waiting in the wings, and, and hopefully their rehabs finally finish off properly and, and they can join this club and reinforce us and, and you know make us the best we can possibly be. Did you have any serious discussions with the Mets in regards to Wheeler and or Syndergaard? I talked to Brody quite a lot, you know, um, you know, as I did with almost every team except for obviously, I think I told you in Fenway, uh, you know, we weren't engaged with Boston at all, but I, I was engaging everybody. Um, so, yeah, I talked to the Mets. James, to the right. Cash, you said, the, said some of the prices were just weren't realistic. And uh, what specifically do you mean by that? Like financially, prospect wise, and, and at that point, like, um, you know, obviously a contending team with the idea that you guys are close and to add, I guess, would have to quote unquote overpay at some point. Was that just beyond a comfort zone for you, um, the way some other teams maybe add and just essentially have to give up top prospects to do so? I, you know, I think if they're all individually answered. Uh, you know, the overpay, you know, as a buyer, you have to, for the most part, it has to hurt. I get that, you know, so, uh, but I was not willing to 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 do what was available um, and what was being presented. Yeah, certainly, and, and clearly my counterparts were unwilling to do what I was willing to do uh, in my offers. So, uh, you know, maybe my counterparts felt my, my offers were underwhelming and I certainly felt their offers were overwhelming. We just never matched up, um, you know, and you know, some, again, and as I said, there's a lot of players that were allegedly available in the, mar available in the marketplace that really weren't. Uh, as you see, they weren't they weren't moved. Um, you had the conversations regardless, and knocked on the doors. And then, you know, some of the players that were available in the marketplace, you know, we didn't really value. You know, especially for the, but we'd knock on the door. Maybe they have a different role for us, be a long man or something like that. And but those prices were weren't really good. So, listen, we 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 tried to look at different ways to to, to navigate, um, see if we can match up and add to again what we have, but. You know, and I, I, I fall back. We have a very strong position group. You know, obviously a very deep bullpen. You know, the, bull, the the rotations obviously was a focus. And if it wasn't the rotation, you know, we could fall back into the bullpen. We we navigated all of that, but we still came away with uh, the best play was we did nothing, uh, and we did nothing for a good reason because we felt that everything that was in front of me was really not obtainable based on the uh, associated costs. And uh, and that's with understanding as a buyer, you have to step up and overpay. But these were prices that I felt were making things way out of reach. So way out of reach and way out of line. So, you know, that's why we're here today talking about the decision to do, uh, do what we did, which was stand pat, fall back on that current roster of guys we have in there, and then obviously wait for the... Uh, some of the people that we have on the uh, disabled list to, to come back. Pete, Ryan, uh, with the situation with Voight now and uh, with some of the other position player uh, injuries you're dealing with, that have you in other markets uh, other than the pitching market uh, today? We talked about it briefly. You know, obviously the unfortunate thing, we're watching this game play out today and you start seeing DD and you, you see, uh, you know, uh, Geo and they get banged up a little bit and you're like, oh, and you already know what happened, you know, the day before Voight. But, you know, we got a very... Uh, as of this date, you know, a very deep roster of, of talent and options, and, and it goes right into AAA. So we, we kicked around, do I need to get another bat? Uh, or, you know, the fact that we have the Talkmans, the Mabins, the, the Clint Frazier's, um, you know, we got Edwin and Canarcion, and when we talked about getting him, it, it was with the understanding of, all right, you know, we're going to get Stanton back here at some, at some point too, and, and, uh, and, but Edwin protects us. 
you know, uh, you know, if there is an issue at first base, you know, so, but we looked at the versatility that DJ LeMay is providing, you know, he can play first, Edwin can play first, uh, and with a lot of those younger guys or versatile guys, whether it's the outfielders I already referenced in Talkman and Maven and Frazier, you know, uh, some of the younger, you know, uh, talented infielders, whether it's Estrada, Valera, Tyler Wade, what have you, you know, it gives us a lot more flexibility. Not that we want it, we want Voight back, but did, did I feel we needed to go to the marketplace to get a bat? After that dialogue, we felt no. We felt like we would, you know, double down on on the on the bats we already have and uh, and continue to focus on the pitching. Dan uh, Boone said that Voight it might be a six week thing if uh, if he has surgery. Are you confident that if that's the case, he will be a player for you down the stretch? Well, I don't know if anybody's um, determined surgery is required just yet. Um, I'm not confident he'll be back in six weeks if he has to have a surgery. I think, I think, I think the standard doctor evaluation from the specialist would be like, yeah, six weeks and stuff. But then, then you got to factor in baseball activities and baseball game ready and all that stuff, which usually adds on to that time frame. So uh, hopefully, it's not something that comes across. Uh, his table for the playing season but if it does and I, I just kind of spoke to the fact that you know um, we have other ways we can play this thing because you know that the importance of the Incarnacion acquisition earlier in the season and do you think there might be a correlation between the abdominal injury he had in in London and this one yeah I would say so I mean the abdominal injury is a core injury and I think it's all re probably related to ultimately uh, affecting him you know in that area and so um that's that's i think why we called it a core injury back in london so yeah i think it's all related is that d disappointing then i mean to you know to have him go through the protocol of going back and then suffering a, a similar in injury no i think it happens um you know uh, i mean it's disappointing you have an injury but it, it's not when we're in london we knew that there could be potential problems moving forward it's hey it looks like this is a an area that Let's see how he responds to rest and recovery. And if he does, you know, then then you're okay, and you can start to forget about it. If obviously he doesn't, then you know we got some more issues to be dealing with, which we are dealing with now. So, um, so you know, I, I was getting to the point where I was forgetting he had the London injury till this occurred. So, but it's occurred. So it's either going to have to be dealt with, or uh, they'll treat it more aggressively with an injection, and, and hopefully he responds well to that. And and then we get back into that forgetting it ever happened mode. Um, sometimes I've you know been around the block here long enough. Uh, we've had this stuff before, where players get through the season with with some aggressive treatment, so to speak, uh, and then they dealt they get get it dealt with in the off season. Um, that's occurred, you know, and with a number of our players, I don't want to name who in the past, and so. But for the ones that it's declared itself that's that's unreasonable, you have to go ahead and deal with a surgical intervention, and and then you know the downtime comes with it. So, um, hopefully, that's not the case because there's no guarantee you'd get back in the time frame we want. But uh, I guess first things first, we'll see how he reacts to the conservative, the more aggressive of conservative protocols. Brendan, to the right. Does not adding a starter today uh, over so to your right all side. the way to the right catch. Yeah. Uh, does not adding a starter today make it any more important that Severino comes back as a starter? You'd mentioned that it's possible you'd maybe use him as a reliever. No, not necessarily. I mean, uh, uh, certainly optimally, we'd love to have him back as a starter, and I, I know optimally that's what he wants too because he is a starter and a very good one. Um, you know, so listen. Uh, Loisaga just started off in the, on a good um, setting yesterday with his two innings on his rehab assignment, and then he'll go three innings as next, next one out. Um, Sebi and, and Batanzas will progress uh, along their lines, and, and ultimately all of them will have a, a chance to play a role uh, yet to be determined in in the future of, uh, of this roster. So we just got to wait on them. Um, but no, me not getting a starter wasn't necessarily that we won't, shouldn't have any impact on whatever Sebi can do. Um, so we just want to get him back, get him healthy, and have him be a legitimate choice for Booney. And then we'll determine, you know, in terms of how many pitches that choice realistically can be. Uh, but we'll kick that can down the road till we get closer to, to you know seeing the light at the end of the tunnel on that. To the left, Brian. Cash, why did you make the trade you did today with the Rockies? Well, obviously, part of uh, 
roster cleanup, so to speak, in anticipation of healthy return to play uh, guys coming off the 60s, it's going to start knocking things, picking people off. And as you know, as you start with these major league contracts with the New World Order with August and September, you know, uh, you start designating guys for assignment. You can't trade them now. You know, it's really a waiver claim scenario. So it's it's trying to get ahead of the roster crunch that you see that could very well play its way in season in 2019, as well as in anticipation of the Rule Five issues in the in the future. So um, that's why. Randy, you mentioned that there were some players that weren't moved that. Were reportedly available. Uh, did you have any serious talks with the Giants? Did you were you ever optimistic that you could get a deal done with them? Um, I think I've been reinforcing for many people about my lack of optimism about getting deals done uh, with anybody based on the price tags out there. Um, I have talked to, as I said, everybody but the Red Sox. So, you know, I, I had several conversations with all teams non-Red Sox and um, but have nothing to show for those talks other than you know uh, talks. Christy. Uh, just first with Boyd, is it uh, just to be clear is it inevitable that he will have to have surgery on this maybe in the offseason? It's not been determined either way. Okay. Obviously if he responds to, to the more aggressive treatment on it then uh, you know which would which includes an injection then then it does I can't rule out that he won't have any issue uh, as he moves forward to deal with but uh, that those are the things they're going to have to determine here in the in the near term. With Severino and and Batances, they've had setbacks so many times. Was there a point or something that happened that made gave you confidence that they would be able to come back and impact this club this year? Uh, I mean, outside of them returning, they're returning from uh, injuries that they should resolve uh, in a certain time frame. With unless there's something new that pops up that's unrelated um the full expectation and hope would be that they would return to who they were you know in a, in a proper time frame before the season's over uh last one Lindsay. with um <clears throat> with what was ultimately available at this deadline how do you reflect back on not meeting the asking price for guys like corbin keichel where you wouldn't have had to give up that prospect depth I mean, they're all related. If obviously, if you sign, if you turn the clock back to the Corbin, then there's a lot of guys currently sitting in that um, locker room that wouldn't be here because, again, all that money would have gone in one direction, and, and which therefore takes away from other directions. So, it's all interrelated, um, you know. So, we certainly, you know, had a lot of good, healthy dialogue with the, the agent on him, and I'm not sure if you mentioned anybody else, but it depends. On, obviously, the bigger the payroll ticket item the the more impact and domino effects out it has elsewhere so we you know uh, repackaged that money and produced you know various you know assets like dj lemay and and you know uh Adavino, amongst others in there that that might not have materialized if we went all in on one particular player so it's again it's all interrelated so um okay thanks cash thanks everybody see you on